This is one of those moments on the channel where I feel as though an intro isn't even necessary because we have waited so long for this moment to take a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco and finally it has arrived. Throughout all the delays, the chip shortages and everything else in between, it seems as though the Ford Bronco has been on an odyssey before it's even arrived at dealers. But the ultimate question is, is the Ford Bronco better than the Jeep Wrangler? And that's why I am here to find out. After 25 years of no competition, Jeep might have just found their match. But let's forget about Jeep for a minute and talk about how important it is for the Ford Bronco to make a return in the US. As earlier this year, we had taken a look at the Ford Bronco Sport and that was a minor appetizer of what was to be expected with the full size model. And having spent about an hour with this vehicle already, I'm really impressed and I do think it was worth the wait. So in this video, we're gonna get our first look at the 2021 Ford Bronco, see how it compares to the Jeep Wrangler, and also see why it just might be the vehicle of the year in 2021. Now, before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Acton Ford in Acton, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Ford inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, Let's get right in this review. It's been a long and bumpy road to get to this point where the Ford Bronco nameplate once again takes center stage. And for the truly dedicated and loyal who never wavered or switched over to Jeep, they've been rewarded with one of the most appealing off-roaders in the modern era. Having enjoyed 25 years without competition, the Jeep Wrangler now has an arch nemesis. One that can offer ruggedness, off-road capability, year-round drivability, and even better, personalization and customization to make the Ford Bronco unique for each owner. The Bronco name hasn't returned just in spirit, but in body as well, as this isn't the same vehicle as its sibling that's built on the Ford Escape platform. This is the real deal, and a return to what this off-roader symbolized during the second half of the 20th century. Starting off with pricing, the model in this review is a Badlands 4-door, which comes in at $44,590. But as you're going to find out once you start adding on features, the price can jump rather quickly. And if you are cross-shopping with the Wrangler, a close comparison would be the Rubicon. What hasn't been talked about much with the Bronco is dimensions, outside of ground clearance and wheel size. As on camera and in photos, the full-size model appears to be much bigger than the Wrangler, but also seems like a big vehicle in general. By going with the four-door model, you're looking at an overall length of around 190 inches, which is about 10 inches shorter than a Ford Explorer, and there'll be a width of about 76 inches, and believe it or not, is only two inches wider than the Bronco Sport. But to answer the most asked question, the Bronco is slightly bigger than the Jeep Wrangler. What does this all mean and how does that affect driving in the city or on back roads? And surprisingly, the Ford Bronco was maneuverable and easy to adapt to, despite the perception that's a large off-roader. Getting to the design for 2021, Ford found inspiration from the first generation, making the return after a 25-year hiatus more special for avid enthusiasts. While still modern when it comes to the aesthetics and smaller details like the LED headlights, the front grille, body lines, and the boxiness of the exterior is a throwback to what these off-roaders used to be from the 60s through the 90s. This retro styling not only pays homage to the past and prior generations, but gives the Bronco an immediate identity, much like the Jeep Wrangler's unmistakable looks and road presence. Normally mounted on the doors for most SUVs, Ford went with an ingenious design by having the side mirrors mounted on the hood, so that they're still functional when you remove the doors during the summer, unlike Jeep, which requires you to buy aftermarket mirrors. You will have blind spot detection, and also spotlights for when you're in dimly lit areas. Moving over to the side profile, our model is sitting on the optional 17-inch black high gloss painted aluminum wheels with a carbonized gray ring wrapped in 33 inch tires. If you offer the Sasquatch package, you'll receive the upgraded 35 inch tires for better off-road capability. As we saw with the Bronco Sport, each trim will have their own distinct badge to add some character, but also from far away, 
you'll be able to identify the model before taking a closer look. Then coming around to the back, as you probably already noticed, we have a soft top for this review, making this Bronco perfect for summer adventures. Just like up front, some of that retro styling can be found for the LED taillights, as overall this off-roader appears to be a modernized interpretation of the first generation. And while the boxiness can be compared to the Jeep Wrangler, the modernized aesthetics helps the Bronco distinguish itself from its closest rival. Under the hood, our model is equipped with a 2.3 liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that puts out 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque if you use premium fuel. And you'll have the option between a 7-speed male transmission or 10-speed automatic, which is what we have paired with the 4-cylinder. For those looking for more power, Ford offers a 2.7 liter V6 that puts out 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. And once again, those numbers can be achieved with premium fuel. Obviously, four-wheel drive will come standard. And for fuel economy, you're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of 17 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway, even with the four-cylinder engine. Stepping inside, you get by power adjustable and heated leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger, as our model has the high package. However, vinyl does come standard, which might be more suitable for buyers taking on the elements. As with most vehicles in this market, the interior is going to be more simplistic. However, there's a good amount of technology which some Bronco owners may not opt for. And compared to the Wrangler, there's a sense that the cabin is a bit more spacious. In front of you, you'll have a half analog, half digital gauge cluster. And it's from here where the drive mode you're in will be displayed. But also you're given a list of information pertaining to the Bronco, including tools useful for the off-road. The functionality was surprising, as Ford tends to not have in-depth digital displays. But for the Bronco, it's more thought out and useful for the driver. As we take a look at the dashboard, above will be the auxiliary switches for when you install accessories, such as lighting. And on the dashboard itself, you have the buttons for the front sway bar disconnect system, front and rear locking, and traction control on and off, all of which will be useful for the off-road. And some of these will be activated automatically if you transition to an off-road mode. Then moving down to the user interface, we have the massive 12-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation. This is Ford's new Sync 4 system that offers a more responsive experience, while also giving you the ability to display your map or off-road information while you're focusing on other settings or changing the radio station. Buyers will be pleased to see the physical dials for the volume and tuning and dual zone climb control, and you'll have buttons for the three level heated seats, AC and fan speed. One of the reasons why you want to go with the high package is because you'll receive a top view camera to help navigate terrain or add some assistance for when you park. You'll also have front and rear parking sensors to make sure you don't hit any stationary objects. And this Bronco is equipped with a front camera which can be used as a trail cam as you crawl your way up a rock filled path. Moving down towards the center console, you'll have a cubby for your smartphone and a USB-C and USB input. You can offer a wireless phone charging pad as part of a luxury package that also gives you a heated steering wheel, the 10 speaker Bing and Olsen sound system, and adaptive cruise control. Next to the gear shifter, there'll be a dial for the GOAT modes as you traverse your way across uncharted territory. Unlike most cars where your window switches are found on the door panels, they'll be placed here as all four doors can be removed. And for the center storage compartment, you'll have plenty of room for smaller items and maybe even a few water bottles as this cubby is pretty deep. Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off on the passenger side and the seat is adjusted further back. It's also on a recline and this is really where upgrading to the Bronco over the Bronco Sport is going to make more sense because this is far more family friendly than the Bronco Sport. Uh, as you guys remember from that review, the second row was pretty tight and cramped even for someone around my height at 5'5". And I still have a few inches of legroom to work with here. Uh, 
closer to my kneecaps, but further down, I have a good amount of room to work with. So this is definitely more family friendly, but also more importantly, you're going to have the headroom as well. Of course, this top can be removed. So you have the soft top for today. So if you do have taller passengers, they're not going to be complaining about being cramped in that regard. But this is really where I'm impressed because you have the uh, interior room where you can actually have taller passengers and a family back here. Now for the center seat, there will be a center hump. However, this vehicle is sized pretty nicely when it comes to width. So I do think you can fit three people back here, especially if you are going off road and you have maybe smaller kids or even just average size adults, this can most certainly work. Now the center hump is somewhat aggressive. It is a bit wider, but it's not really impeding on my legroom at all. So this is really great to see. And I think it really truly is a five passenger vehicle. Then on the driver's side, I just the seat to someone of my height around 5'5". Five, five, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. And this right here is why you wanna go with the full-size Bronco over the subcompact Bronco Sport because the second row seating area is gonna be far more spacious and conducive for that family. But also if you're gonna have friends tag along with you on an off-road adventure, they can sit back here, not feel claustrophobic in any way when it comes to legroom or shoulder room or even headroom. And it's just, it's the ultimate all around great vehicle that we've been waiting for for a very long time. Also back here, you will have a USB-C and USB input to go along with a three pronged outlet. And you'll also have the switches for your power windows on the center console, because of course these doors can be removed. Also, you're not going to have two rear air vents and that is not to be expected at all for a vehicle in this segment. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now quickly taking a look at the rear cargo area, you will have 35 and a half cubic feet behind the second row seats, which will outclass a Jeep Wrangler. And back here, I was able to fit all my camera gear and still have plenty of room for groceries, smaller items, but also since we have the soft top and even just the higher roof line, I'd have plenty of room to stack up other items. So if you are looking for a vehicle that's for adventuring and going off road, or maybe you're going on a road trip, you can fit plenty of bags of luggage back here, especially if you are going camping as well. Then with the second row seats folded, that space for rail and double in size to 77 and a half cubic feet, once again, outclassing the Jeep Wrangler. So from the exterior, the Ford Bronco is a bit bigger than the Wrangler. And then when it comes to interior space, you're gonna notice that up front, but also when it comes to cargo space as well. It should also be noted that with the soft top, you will be gaining a few extra cubic feet of room compared to the hard top model. So if you're looking for a vehicle that is going to be your summer off-roader and your adventure vehicle, then going with the Ford Bronco soft top is gonna to be the way to go. So overall, you have a very spacious and practical vehicle if you are going on some summer vacations with the family or you're gonna be going on some adventures with some good friends. All right, so let's take the Ford Bronco out for a test ride to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, and how it compares to the Jeep Wrangler, and to see if this really is the ultimate adventure vehicle in 2021. Photos and videos do not do this vehicle justice at all. And when you watch the YouTube videos, when you look at the photos, you think, this thing has to be pretty massive, that it looks like it's bigger than the Jeep Wrangler, and it is. It will sit a bit higher. Also, of course, you're gonna be a bit wider and a bit longer with the four-door, but this is definitely manageable for back row driving, which is really nice. Now, more importantly, too, is that since we have independent front suspension, I'm going over these bumps with ease. I'm not getting thrown around. And that's one thing you can't get with the Jeep Wrangler, which is the solid front axle. And that is going to make driving on a daily basis very unpleasant. But this is actually really nice. Now, of course, when it comes to road noise, you are going to hear it. Uh, it does sound a bit tinny in here. Of course, we do have a soft top. So it has that truck-like feel. But more importantly though, compared to say a Jeep Wrangler, the interior seems a bit bigger, but also it's more modernized. So you have a somewhat digital gauge cluster with an analog gauge as well. So it has a nice balance, but also the massive 12 inch infotainment system is really nice as well. It's dominating the dashboard layout. But I love how the interior is laid out more importantly. Nothing is in my way. Nothing is really in my front vision. So I'm 
not getting drawn in by anything else. I can see everything in front of me. This is exactly what I want to experience with this vehicle. I really like the cornering ability and maneuverability of the Ford Bronco. Uh, of course, it's not going to have a lower center of gravity, so you're not going to be taking these tighter corners at higher speeds, which you're probably not going to be doing anyway. But for daily driving, for the daily driver aspect, this is certainly doable. It's very comfortable in here. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that with the Bronco, you will have to depress the brake pedal very aggressively to stop this vehicle, and that's to be expected with the bigger tires. Now, one thing that people have been pointing out with the Bronco, whether it was the Bronco Sport or the full-size Bronco, is that, oh, the full-size Bronco is closely related to the Ford Ranger, and then, uh, you know, the Ford Bronco Sport is based on the Ford Escape and just rebadged Ford Escapes and Ford Rangers. No, it's not. Not at all. Not the way it's driving. And this really feels like a truck. It really does. Now, interior-wise, it would be similar to a pickup truck, just based on the amount of shoulder room I have here, even the layout. However, it doesn't drive like a pickup truck. It's a completely different entity. And what I like, too, is that it doesn't even feel like the Ranger at all in terms of driving dynamics and handling. So I really like that. Now the ultimate question is whether the Ford Bronco is better than the Jeep Wrangler. That is not up to me to decide, especially where I'm not going to be taking this vehicle off-road today. So this review is really based on on-road driving and can you daily drive the Ford Bronco. And from what I've experienced in the first 10 minutes, absolutely, it's pretty comfortable in here. Uh, these seats provide a good amount of support and comfort. Now they're not aggressively bolstered, obviously it's not what this vehicle is meant to do. But if you're the type of person who will be driving this Monday through Friday, and during the weekends and you're not going to be going off-road that much and you're looking for a great vehicle for your family this is definitely a vehicle to do that what I really like too is the amount of vision you have here there are not a lot of blind spots at all and something that you don't see with regular cars is that the B pillars are not very aggressive at all they're not in your way because your windows are massive but also the A pillars are super thin and you have a plenty of front vision. You have a nice panoramic view in front of you. So it's a very safe vehicle in that regard, especially because with the side mirrors being placed in a different spot, um, you would think that, oh, you know, am I got to look for my blind spots? But I like having the cam I like having the side mirrors, I should say, on uh, the hood itself or attached to the A-pillar because I can see a lot more of my blind spots. So I love that. I love the way this vehicle is designed. Definitely well thought out, especially where you might be removing these doors during the summer and the side mirrors, you don't need to buy aftermarket side mirrors. So Ford has definitely thought this vehicle out for sure. So let's get on the highway here. Not bad, I can get up to speed pretty quickly. Now, of course, I can only assume that they have premium fuel in the Ford Bronco today with this 2.3 liter four cylinder. Uh, so I'm saying right around 300 horsepower. Of course, it's gonna have right around 325 pound-feet of torque. Not bad, you can get up to speed pretty quickly. It's no slouch at all. <laughs> Now, of course, you're not going to get thrown back in your seat, but if you do want to pass slower drivers on the highway, you can most certainly do that. Now, on the highway, now you hear the road noise, uh, mostly in the back, though. That's where I'm hearing most of the road noise while I'm driving on this highway. But up front, it's not that bad at all. What I can appreciate about the Bronco is that they used styling from the previous generations, like the first generation from the 1960s, but also... When it comes to the driving dynamics, when it comes to the feeling behind the wheel, it feels like an off-roader. It feels like the old school Ford Bronco. So if you have come from prior generations, maybe from the one from the 90s, the last generation before the 25 year hiatus, you're gonna feel right at home here. But also if you are cross shopping this with a Jeep Wrangler, it's going to feel very similar. But like I said before, I think the interior is better. I think the way this vehicle is set up, it's better for a consumer in 2021 compared to the Jeep Wrangler, which I think has been building off the same uh, blueprint for so long that it does seem a bit outdated. When you look at the interior, it's the same thing. Where now with the Ford Bronco, I think we're finally gonna start seeing some development in this segment, where maybe we're gonna start seeing some of the technology come into play, but also just when it comes to the refinement and how it feels in the interior, this just feels 
miles ahead of where the Wrangler is. And I understand that Wrangler people are going to be like, what are you talking about? You know, that's complete disrespect. And I get that. But where the Bronco is coming from with what you have here, this is a vehicle that will give the Wrangler a run for its money. This is exactly what we've been waiting for for so long. And it's just great to see that Ford went back to their roots. And that's why I think this vehicle is going to do quite well. Uh, there's always been that concern, even from Ford dealers, where are people going to enjoy this vehicle? Are they going to regret buying it? Are they going to back out uh, when it comes to ordering? I have to be honest, I think that if you have ordered this vehicle and you're looking to experience it for the first time before yours arrives, take it out for a test drive. This is exactly what you're looking for. Now, of course, I wouldn't necessarily go with the 2.3. I'd be more of a fan that would go with the 2.7 just because you want to have that extra performance. You want to have that V6. However, the 2.3 is where you're going to get the male transmission. So trade-offs for sure but uh, when it comes to the on-road performance when it comes to the on-road driving experience this is exactly what I think a lot of people who are in this market are going to be looking for but what I will say though with the 2.3 is that it doesn't feel underpowered it provides a good amount of performance especially on the lower end but also even just driving around on these back roads even getting on the highway it doesn't feel like a slouch it doesn't feel like it's slow at all and I feel like that if you have ordered a 2.3, you're not going to be regretting that at all. With a 10-speed automatic, you're going to have a very smooth transition through the gears. I actually really enjoy this transmission, but also when it comes to accelerations, it's pretty linear as well, so it doesn't have that jerkiness to it when you are accelerating. You don't really get thrown back through the gears. It's just a very soft and fun vehicle to drive. So as I make my way back towards the dealership, I want to give my final impressions here for the Ford Bronco and how it compares to the Jeep Wrangler, but also, of course, how it compares to its smaller sibling, the Bronco Sport. And starting off with the Bronco Sport, I had said during that review that it was maybe going to be an appetizer of what we're gonna expect with the Ford Bronco. And I am happy to announce that both vehicles drive very differently. Uh, the Ford Bronco is very much like a truck. It feels like a truck. The interior feels like a pickup truck. And then just the driving dynamics is completely different than uh, with what the Ford Bronco Sport is going to offer. Now, the Ford Bronco Sport is going to be rugged. It's going to have more of a rigid suspension compared to the Ford Escape. So I wouldn't even compare the two. I think that the Bronco Sport is definitely its own separate vehicle. Uh, then when you look at the Bronco itself, it's just a vehicle that we've never experienced from Ford in the modern era. And that's why I feel that Bronco buyers who are sitting at home right now watching this review, waiting for theirs to arrive, I can definitely announce right here after this 30 minute test drive that you are going to be very pleased with your purchasing decision. Uh, I still think that I'd go with the 2.7 just because I want to have that more performance and power. But when it comes to the 2.3, it provides everything you're looking for. But also, even though you still have some of those creature comforts, you have the heated seats, you also have the 12 inch, the 12 inch infotainment system, it still feels like an off-road vehicle. Even though you have that modern technology, it still has that layout that's traditional to the Ford Bronco, whether it's the exterior or the interior. So I think loyal customers who've been waiting a long time, they're going to appreciate this vehicle for sure. I am not going to sit here and say that the Ford Bronco is better than the Jeep Wrangler. That is up to you to decide, especially if you are a serious buyer and have purchased the Jeep Wrangler in the past. All I'm going to say here is that you should test drive it, experience it, and make up the decision for yourself. Uh, but what I will say though is that with the independent front suspension, the Ford Bronco is more daily drivable, especially if you're going to do a lot more on-road driving rather than off-road. It just makes it more family friendly and more family comfortable, especially where since you have the outer banks trim, which is going to give you more of a gloss black exterior design and more of that civilianized feel, uh, you're at least still going to have the offer capability, but it's going to be able, it's going to be a vehicle that you can drive Monday through Friday. But what I will say though, is that for the Ford Bronco, I think it can compete with the Wrangler immediately and it can be a success the minute it arrives at dealers. And the reason why I say that is because you have the customizability. You have the option to really uh, personalize this vehicle, to make it your own. And even though there are a cult following of Wrangler owners who will go off-road, that will be doing rock climbing or rock crawling, they're going to be doing everything that Jeep Wrangler should be doing. 
there's a lot of Jeep Wrangler owners who just go to the store all the time and just drive it Monday through Friday and will never see the off-road. And I can totally see someone buying a Ford Bronco and doing the exact same. And if you are that type of person, you're looking for that off-road looking vehicle that's cool, it's gonna draw in a lot of attention, that you will have that ability to go off-road. You're gonna have the option to make this vehicle your Monday through Sunday driver or make it your off-roader, you can do that. And that's why the Ford Bronco, in my opinion, is a perfect competitor to the Jeep Wrangler and is most certainly gonna give Jeep a run for their money. So at the end of the day, what are my final thoughts for the Ford Bronco? Well, like I said during the test drive, I am not going to sit here and say that it's a better vehicle than the Jeep Wrangler. That is up to you to decide. Uh, all I can say is and encourage is to test drive a Ford Bronco for yourself. However, from what I experienced for the on-road driving portion of this review, the independent front suspension makes a huge difference overall for this vehicle. It's more comfortable and forgiving compared to the Jeep Wrangler. Now, again, I don't know how that affects off-road capability and off-road driving, but what I will say though is if you are driving this vehicle as your daily commuter, you're going to love it because it does provide a good amount of comfort. Also, I love the seats as well. Even though they're not aggressively bolstered, they do provide a good amount of comfort and support, so you're not gonna be thrown around while you're driving on uh, a daily basis. Also, if you are ordering on with a 2.3, you have a good amount of performance and horsepower. It doesn't feel underpowered at all. And then when it comes to the, to the interior design, it's traditional, but you have the modern technology blended in very nicely. And I do believe that there will be people who will go with more of a base trim or lower trims just so they don't want to have the big 12 inch infotainment system. And I completely understand that. But if you are looking at buying a Badlands and you want to go all out, this is a great all around vehicle to do it in. You have the offer capability, you have that ability to take on any terrain really. But if you are daily driving it, it's very family friendly and very comfortable overall. But then getting to the more important aspect, which is the size and also the maneuverability. Steering input, there's not a lot of weight to it when it comes to steering, but it's very direct. And you don't get a lot of body roll, even at lower speeds. So it made driving on back roads pretty enjoyable, which was not expected. But then when it comes to the size as well, as somebody who comes from a compact car, uh, this doesn't feel very big when you hop inside. Now, of course, you have a lot of shoulder room, but when it comes to driving it, uh, even on like smaller back roads, it's not that bad. You don't really need to cringe like, oh, am I getting too close to the end of the road or am I getting too close to the cars coming at me? This is just a perfect sized SUV or truck-like vehicle that I think a lot of people from a wide range of demographics are going to love. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.